Woman NG, and welcome to the traditional lands of the Gunai Kurnai people. Uh, we're here today on the Gippsland Lakes. The Gippsland Lakes, uh, the traditional lands of the Tatungalung people, uh, whose um, tribal lands extended right across the Gippsland Lake system. Uh, so it's a very important um, place uh, for Gunai Kurnai people, and obviously the Gippsland Lakes, um, with its natural resources. Uh, sustain the Gunai Kurnai people, particularly the Tungalung people, uh, for many thousands of years. So very important culturally, uh, but also uh, as a part of our natural environment as well. So once again, Wu Meninji, and welcome to the traditional lands of the Tungalung people on the Gippsland Lakes. The creation story is about the origin of our people. It helps to explain the bonds we have to our country, and reminds us that our ancestors are still watching over the landscape today. It is important for us to be able to walk in their footsteps and follow their journeys from thousands of years ago. It is a powerful spiritual aspect to our cultural heritage and fundamental to our recognition and respect. We are guided by the spirits of our ancestors when we walk through this country. The Barrier Island is important to me because it really means a lot when it comes to culture and I like to look after my land. I wanted to, I want to do what they did back then. This area is important because it's where the land meets the water and the two connect and you know we live off the land and the water. Some of the threats facing the Barrier Islands are um, overgrowth of vegetation so we come in and do a lot of weed killing just to contain it so that um, you know the natural plants can grow uh, the way they're supposed to. We have a problem with sea spurge and other weeds. And we're trying to yeah, get rid of those. We are baiting um, foxes uh, to protect the native animals along the barrier islands. Those animals include um, birds and small marsupial animals. So another um, a problem that, that, that faces the islands is uh, the campers and the rubbish that they leave around on the island not taking care of it and then that requires us to come out here and maintain it. I love working out on country because it just makes me feel a bit better about my culture. I get, get, get to know it a lot more. Like I did not know one thing about my culture about I'd say 10 years ago but as I'm getting older and progressing through my life, it's it's starting to I'm starting to know a bit more about it, and I really enjoy learning it. It's it's good to be on country because you, you you're out in the nature of of the land, and um, I think um, the land sort of talks to you, and um, you sort of pick up on on the natural environment that that you sort of um, work on every day. Eventually, you uh, you, you adapt to to the natural movement of life um, out in the bush. I do enjoy working on country. Um, personally for myself it's mainly because I don't really know much about my culture and um, you know what, what's what's I guess expected uh, but yeah so working out on country allows for me to learn new things and learn off other people that I'm working with. I like working on country because we get to see different spots and hear the different stories of you know the areas that we're going to work in. It's pretty educational too, as as, um, as you sort of, sort of grow into work and um, you p become a part of um, the company as well. At the same time, you're sort of learning um, yourself, and um, it makes you feel pretty um, proud to be um, Aboriginal, especially in our area. This island was created about three years ago from dredge spoil. It's an already existing island but the dredge spoil was placed here uh, to entice birds to come and nest and it's done its job, it's been fantastic. Currently we've got about a hundred small tern here on site. Fairy terns and little terns are nesting here together and uh, in really good numbers. Fairy terns are about 80 birds and little terns are about 20 birds. We have waders that come here that migrate from other parts of the world such as Siberia and they're here to fuel up and then make that long journey back to Siberia, so whenever they're disturbed, it's time that they should really be feeding. So if you do see you know, birds along the shoreline pecking and, and feeding and doing that sort of stuff, just leave them alone. 
because that's the critical time to fuel up their bodies to make that long journey back up to the Northern Hemisphere. A healthy lake system is absolutely imperative to a colony being successful. Um, they need the habitat, but also more importantly, they need the food. If the food source isn't here, uh, the bait sized fish that they use to feed their partners and their young, they're not going to survive. So it's all interconnected, no fish, no habitat, no turn breeding. I think everyone has a responsibility. Uh, it doesn't just end with land managers and people from the department or Parks Victoria. We've all got a role to play. A lot of the areas are signed uh, to ask people to stay out of the nesting areas, it's just warning people to, uh, to keep off the island or to keep clear of the actual breeding colony and more importantly to keep their dog away because dogs can just cause so much havoc in a breeding colony within five minutes they can abandon and turn colonies have abandoned in the past due to the presence of dogs running through.